Thank you very much. And uh, sorry to uh, give you a false start there before. I really did appreciate the friendly in intro, Andrew. So um, as we were talking about a little bit earlier, Club 4x4 Insurance has been a, a partner of uh, the Toyota Land Cruiser Club pretty much since our first or second year. So one of our longest standing partnerships. And as a business, we really do value the support of four-wheel drive clubs and, and really respect what you're doing out there to keep our favourite hobby going for generations to come. The Toyota Land Cruiser Club is one that's especially close to my heart, um, not only because I own an 80 series that's out in the car park and also partnered with you guys over the years and got to meet Andrew a number of times in my time at Toyo Tires Australia, but it, it really warmed my heart in joining Club 4x4 Insurance to see, and this was about two and a half years ago, to see how much they cared about four-wheel drive clubs clubs and I personally am someone who grew up within a motoring club as well and, and still to this day I'm a member and um, it, it just it's really important to support that next generation of people coming through and, and keeping that hobby going for generations to come so that's why both personally and as a business at Club 4x4 Insurance we really do um, value the support of four-wheel drive clubs and, and do what we can to give back to that community. Let's see if I'm going to be plagued with another tech issue or if this one's going to work for me. There we go. So um, Club 4x4 Insurance was kicked off in uh, 2015 and it's, it's a business to this day that is by four-wheel drivers for four-wheel drivers. And look, the way the story goes is that um, one of our uh, board members, Pat Callanan, that you might recognise from TV, um, he was four-wheel driving up in the cells in inland New South Wales and had a bit of a moment there where um, a brand new at the time GU Patrol that he was planning to give away at the beginning of the season was winching its way up a hill with a camper trailer on the back. He got out feeling bad for his hard-working cam camera crew scrambling up and down the hill and as he shut the door, he watched that patrol and camper trailer slide right down the hill in front of him and wrap around a tree at the bottom of the hill that stopped it going into a gully. Now, that meant that the vehicle was recoverable, but for around the eighty or ninety thousand dollars that he'd spent on that vehicle, insurance were lucky to give him thirty. Um, so really, at that day, he realised that there wasn't a fit for purpose insurance product in the Australian market that, that suited four -wheel drivers and especially modified four -wheel drivers. So he called up our managing director to this day, Tony, um, who's been an insurance veteran for a number of years and happened to, the week prior, have his brother ride off a Hilux in the Northern Territory that the insurance company wouldn't come and get out of a river. So um, between the two of them, they'd both had a, a bit of an example of what could go wrong if you don't have the right level of cover in the bush. And they put their heads together and soon after launched Club 4x4 Insurance. So from there, we've, we've kind of grown to um, still be a specialist insurer, but also cover camper vans, camp, sorry, caravans, camper trailers, and also slide on campers, as well as four wheel drives. So uh, yeah, nine years on now, heading into our 10th next year, and um, we've been growing at a pretty steady pace. And um, thank you, of course, to those in the room who support us and who have helped spread that word. But I guess um, one of the things that we try and overcome as a brand is we're not just about your hardcore four-wheel drivers. And yes, we do cover people anywhere that they can legally take those vehicles in Australia. Um, but our insurance works similar to how other motor insurance does when you're getting around town too. It's just that we will cover you to the extremities of your adventures. But if you have a bingle around the corner, that's what we're here for as well. So before I move forward uh, with a bit more about who we are and what we do, how many of you in the room with us now are currently insured with Club 4x4? It's a healthy showing of hands and thank you very much for your support. Um, I hope by the end of tonight a, a few more of you are, are interested in checking out Club 4x4 Insurance, but the purpose of this is not to be a hard sales pitch. As Andrew introduced, you know, we've been a long-term partner of the Land Cruiser Club and I just wanted to come along, you know, try and be here every year or two and, and show that we are here, we do care, we're more than just an ad in the newsletter. Um, and we do have a, a couple of free stubby holders up the back near the tea and coffee, so be sure to help yourself uh, because I'm sure they'll go like hotcakes. So I won't bore you with going through our product disclosure statement or rattling off everything that we do or don't do because at the end of the day, our comprehensive motor insurance at a base level does most of what our, our competitors will do, whether it's your, your inner city accidents, fire, theft, that sort of thing. But we do have a couple of unique benefits that are targeted at um, four-wheel drivers, camper van, uh, caravan and camper trailer owners. Sorry, I always butcher that one. Um, we do have a couple of unique features targeted specifically at adventurers like yourselves that if one of these three kind of key selling points doesn't set off a light bulb for you, then we might not be the right insurance brand for you. 
First and foremost, we cover four wheel drives, caravans and camper trailers anywhere that they are legally allowed to go in Australia. I'll talk more about what that means in a sec. Um, we do also cover them for their real agreed value as a separate agreed value on that policy. Um, so that includes things like your gear, your modifications, but also your labour and installation costs. And we are currently the only comprehensive motor insurance provider in Australia with off-road recovery cover for if things go wrong and you need a bit of a help from a professional. There we go. Now, a picture tells a thousand words with this one. And um, when we say anywhere you can legally go in Australia, we really do mean it. You know, sometimes it can get a little bit difficult there about gazetted versus non-gazetted roads. Water crossings seem to be one that our competitors are particularly shy away from. But even say, for example, beach fall driving, where there are some places where you do need to go below the low tide mark if the, the tides are appropriate to get to the next place you need to go, or cross through a saltwater crossing. Whether it's a state forest, you're going to a fall drive park that's private property overlanding, even indigenous land uh, in the far north if you've got the right permit to be there and whether you need a local guide. We genuinely mean it. Anywhere that you can legally go in Australia in a four-wheel drive caravan or camper trailer, our insurance can cover those vehicles there. Now, we do say legally. Um, we do need to kind of, uh, you know, at least put a bit of a qualifier there, but I, I often get asked questions of, on this and it's, it's not intended to be a cause for concern. So, when we say legally allowed to be there, what we mean is that vehicle is out there doing the right thing. So we've all been full driving somewhere where it's a national park, then it's a state forest, and then you take a wrong turn and suddenly you're under a set of power lines that's probably Osgrid land or something like that, right? Now, if something goes wrong on one of those tracks and you're not actively trespassing, you're not actively out there doing the right thing, we're not going to ask you for your exact GPS coordinates for any reason other than to recover the vehicle. And we're not looking at ways to say, well, you crossed that border or you crossed that fence there, um, we're backing out of the claim. That's, that's not what we're about. And our uh, claims assessors and our head of claims has a famous line that he goes by of, if it's grey, we pay. What he means by that is we're there to support our customers and to, to not get into those arguments that the insurance industry has been known for. So um, I guess that's a way of saying there that you know, if you are out there doing the right thing, you can have confidence that you're covered, whether it is a gazetted or a non-gazetted road or it does involve some pretty tricky four-wheel driving. But where we draw the line in saying legally allowed to be there is to stop people doing the wrong thing that all of us get up in arms about anyway. You know, moving rocks out of the way on property that you're not meant to drive on, cutting chains to get into closed tracks, that sort of thing that I'm sure everyone in this room could agree is, is not only the wrong thing to do, but also what clubs like yours actively exist to do of lobby government and keep these tracks open and in good condition. That's what we agree with too. So short of towing a caravan up a track that says no caravans allowed, um, there are very few places in Australia that if you're doing the, the right thing, we can't cover you. Now, getting to some of those more extreme four wheel driving places, um, a, sure, a Land Cruiser out of any of the vehicles off the factory showroom floor has probably got the best chance of getting there, but there are some places where modifications are, are essential to try and get to that location you're going. So. We're a little bit different in the way that we value vehicles insured with us. Um, firstly, um, oh, sorry, that's the right one. Um, firstly, like the majority of our competitors, um, we do give you the option to insure the base vehicle for agreed or market value. So nothing particularly out of the norm there. Where we are different is that we cover modifications and accessories as a separate agreed value to the base vehicle itself. So it's not uncommon for um, someone to come to us, or actually I'll use an example that was out in the, the waiting room before, to buy a, a brand new 300 series GR Sport um, and then throw $30,000 of accessories onto that and you can end up close to you know that $200,000 mark. Now, you talk to um, an, at one of our competitors out there and they will aim to have an agreed value that encompasses both the modifications and the, the base vehicle itself. We intentionally keep them separate because it's not uncommon for people to call us up and say, look, I've got a $40,000 Hilux, but I've just finished spending $110,000 on it. Now, for most people, they'd be kind of thinking, well, how do we meet in the middle somewhere? But we are able to cover vehicles for those sorts of values, say $100,000 plus worth of mods, we can have that on the policy. Now, something that often gets overlooked there though is that if you've spent the money kitting out that vehicle, if something were to go wrong, you'd need to spend that money again to build it to how it was. So that's why that agreed value can also include labour and fitting costs. So 
whether that's you know getting diff locks installed aftermarket, um, whether it's getting a you know a flash tune, a gearbox upgrade, um, there's a lot of things in there that are really labour intensive that the the cost of the componentry alone won't reflect, which is why we have fitting costs and installation included. A really easy example for that is um, 12 volt systems, right? You know, copper wire fittings not that expensive, battery controllers and lithium batteries you know starting to get up there. But the auto electrician that you pay to fit that stuff can often be the lion's share of the bill, and rightfully so. It's a very technical job, and they do a really good job doing it. But if you were to replace that vehicle after a theft or an accident or some other form of total loss, then you want to make sure you've got the, the right amount of cover there to be able to rebuild that vehicle as it was. Now, a third one to call out there under the value of your vehicle. We've spoken about the base cost of the vehicle, so whether it's market or agreed value to buy another standard one. We've got your modifications and accessories that are permanently fixed to that vehicle that we cover as a separate agreed value. But we do also have something that we call personal effects cover to ca cover all of those little portable items that you may have in your four wheel drive. The easiest example of that is a fridge. So a fridge slide, nine times out of 10, will be permanently fixed to the vehicle. It'll either be bolted in, um, you know, some form of permanent fixing, but the fridge will often be strapped down, meaning that that fridge is portable. Now we can cover both of those items. We cover the fridge slide as a modification accessory, including uh, fitting and installation costs if someone fitted that for you. Um, and then on the fridge, um, we cover that as what we call a personal effect. Now that means that that fridge is covered whether it's in the vehicle or away from the vehicle, anywhere in Australia, under the vehicle's motor insurance policy. So the reason we do this is portable gear is by that definition, portable. You know, you may take that fridge out to charge it overnight in the room in the caravan park. You may go on a trip with your mate who's taking their four-wheel drive and caravan and you just want to take another fridge in there to, to have the gear. Um, this extends to many other portable items like your fancy cookers, camp chairs, you know, drones and camera equipment are, some, are becoming a bit more popular there. But basically the idea is that every one of our policies comes with a $2,000 amount in there for those portable items that you might just have hanging around the vehicle. Um, but you can upgrade that to $5,000 or $10,000. And whatever your level of personal effects cover, we simply ask that for items over $1,000, you tell us specifically what they are. That means if you've got a really fancy angle fridge that's a couple of thousand dollars, when it comes to, uh, you know, God forbid, the, the event of a, a claim, um, we can validate what that, um, what that item is and the actual uh, specific item so we can make sure that you're replaced like for like. So between those three of those things, we really aim to value your four wheel drive caravan or camper trailer for what it's worth, both the base vehicle, the modifications and accessories, and also the portable items that you carry within it. So you can take that vehicle wherever you're legally allowed to take it and it's covered for what it would cost you to replace it. But what if something just goes wrong off-road? That's where our off-road recovery cover comes in and we are the only insurance provider in Australia to offer it. So there's, there's a little bit of confusion around this one sometimes. Say you have an, what we'd call an insurable event. Let's call it an accident doing a river crossing up in the Northern Territory, right? It's on us to go and recover that vehicle, whether you've had a really remote accident or if you've had a fender bender around the corner from here on your way home. That's a genuine insurance claim. That's an insurable event. It's on us to recover that vehicle. What off-road recovery cover exists for is non-insurable events. So think about uh, you know, a gearbox failure, a wheel bearing failure. Um, you have an engine failure. You kill a diff or a torque, uh, sorry, a, a clutch or a torque converter you shred all of your spare tires or you, you don't have the right equipment to change a spare tire in the scenario you're in. Even you just bogged up to the sills like that and you don't have the recovery equipment to get you out. Those are the sort of things that off-road recovery cover exists to, to give you a helping hand with. So um, that is to cover the cost of a professional recovery. And every one of our policies comes with $1,500 of off-road recovery cover. But if you are heading really remote, you can upgrade that to 15,000 or 30,000. Now, a question I'll often get asked is, um, how can I add and remove that additional off-road recovery cover? So, say you have a big trip coming up and you go, gee, it's probably a good idea to get that off-road recovery cover on there. Um, you can call us up at any time and upgrade to 15,000 or 30,000 with every policy automatically including 1,500. So you can upgrade that at any time and all we ask is that it stays around until renewal. So what that means is that when your policy is up for renewal, you can choose whether you need that additional recovery cover again. 
Um, the reason we do that is it's a bit of a pro rata um, calculation on your premium and if we're turning it on, turning it off all the time, it's a lot of admin for you, it's a lot of admin for us. So yeah, you can add that anytime on your policy, it just sticks around until renewal. And basically the way that off-road recovery cover works is you call a professional recovery agent, they come and get you out of trouble, you pay that invoice just to get going and on the road, not waiting around for us during business hours. Um, and then once that's sorted, you show us the invoice and we reimburse you less in excess. Now to be really clear, um, it is a $200 excess on that $1,500 of off-road recovery cover. If you upgrade to the $15,000 or the $30,000, it's $200 plus 5% of the recovery cost. Now the reason we do that is it's pretty rare that people claim on off-road recovery cover, but when they do, it's pretty expensive. Um, so we like to scale that in a way that it scales with the recovery, which means we can keep our everyday premiums for all of our customers as sharp as possible. So really 5% is better than 100% um, and it's a, a way that we just make sure that everyone gets that level of cover and those who need a bit more of a helping hand can get it. So those are the, kind of the top three things that we see value in in our insurance policies that appeal to off-road adventurers like yourselves. But um, another thing that we are really proud of is that we are an Australian team. You know, there's nearly 100 of us now um, between our Maroochydore, Sydney and Melbourne offices. 70-odd um, of those are up in Maroochydore at our, um, what we call our sales and service hub. Um, so they'll be the people that you most likely speak to in the event of um, either taking out a policy or any sort of service. Um, but when it is time for a claim, we do also have an office of about 20 people down in Melbourne um, that are, you know, it's, it's a, quite an expert team there of claims assessors. So between them and a handful of us in Sydney, nearly 100 of us in Australia, and you will notice if you have had interactions with us, especially over the phone, um, we, are, we do try and be different to your traditional call centre, you know. We're not, um, you know, driving our staff to answer as many calls as they possibly can during a day and get their call times as short as they possibly can. I, I'm sure you will have noticed that um, we do like a bit of a chat, you know. We're, um, we're really there to understand what adventure means to you, what sort of assets you use to, to have those adventures, and then in what ways our insurance can support those adventures. So... Um, I do encourage you, if you are um, calling up to have a chat with us, feel free to, to talk about your latest trip or about the latest things you've done on your vehicle because our team truly do love to just understand what it is that adventure means to you and how we can cover that. Now, just to wrap up there, um, I, I really just want to highlight a couple of the ways that we try our best to support four-wheel drive clubs and members of them like yourselves. So... Um, as one of our longest standing partnerships, you would have seen that a few of the offers on these slides have changed a bit over the years. And to give you the context on that, um, we about 12 months ago just took a holistic review of all of our promotions out in market, how our discounts worked, how our pricing structure worked. And really what came out of that is in combination when we were giving away tr um, savings for driver training, um, for our multi-vehicle discount and also some generous um, discounts to four-wheel drive clubs and, and some other promotions. Um, we're giving away quite a large chunk of our margin there that wasn't sustainable. What we chose to do was remove the majority of our discounts from market, but one thing we fought for and held on to was that four-wheel drive clubs re retain their level of discount. Now, one of the other things to fall out of that was that um, driver training was something that was um, well received uh, to get a saving from our customers, but also four -wheel drive club members were specifically the ones that were really um, doing a lot of training and um, potentially not being recognised for that level of training. So about six months ago, we made a change to specifically recognise um, driver training from four-wheel drive clubs, whether they're RTO accredited or not. So that's actually feedback that came out of the last time I was here in, in August 22, I think it was. Um, we are speaking with your trainers about ways that we can kind of better recognise the level of training that you offer your members and provide a saving, but not make it a headache for, for everyone involved. So... Um, I will start with that last point first then, that we can now recognise any driver training that features either off-road or towing and that it has both a theoretical and a practical element, meaning that you go through a bit of theory, whether it's you know, a, a training book or a presentation from the trainer there about you know, what's involved in that, um, that skill, and then you get behind the wheel or get on the recovery gear and, and put it to work. So. Um, that does recognise the beginner training that you do within the club as well as a lot of the other levels of training that, um, that you do. I know some of it is RTO accredited and, and some isn't, correct? 
Yeah, so I know that there's quite a lot of training courses in there, but from our perspective, as long as you do the beginner training that, um, that, that you need to do to get out there and be safe on trips, uh, we can offer you a saving on your policy there. And for anyone who has a policy that um, may have gone under the previous structure, um, your discount will remain for life of policy. So there's no need to change that. But if you have completed driver training and you're either a, an existing customer or a new customer and you're not sure if you've got that saving, please do call us up and ask about it um, because you know th this isn't just a new sales drive. I really do want to make sure that um, people in this room who are eligible for those savings are getting them. So. We've got our driver training saving for four-wheel drive or towing training. We've got our 10% uh, discount for multiple vehicles insured with us. But you do also get a 5% member discount using the code TLCCNSW1. Um, I have sent that around to um, Andrew and Greg and um, there's, there'll be ways to get that code and a copy of that presentation. But if you're not sure, just calling up and saying I'm a member of the Toyota Land Cruiser Club of New South Wales, we'll be able to look that up for you and apply that discount. So really um, they are combined savings that stack on top of each other, it's not an either or. So you can get a saving for your driver training and a 10% discount for multiple vehicles insured with us and a 5% discount for being a member of the Land Cruiser Club with that code on the screen there. So I just wanted to walk through a little bit about you know, our history, being around for nearly 10 years now and, and partnered with your club for a number of those. What it is that we, we specialise in, which is covering vehicles anywhere they can legally go in Australia for what they're really worth with off-road recovery cover if they get stuck. Highlight that we are a proudly Australian team and that we do have offers here for your members to, to kind of support you and also support your new member drives in showing value to new members. Um, but I do find that uh, this presentation normally uh, musters up a couple of curly questions about insurance. I think there's still a little bit of general business left to go in the meeting, so unless anyone has a particularly pressing question, I might just hang around and we can have that discussion at the end. But by all means, I might have time for one or two. Yeah, if anyone's got a question. Hey mate, so do you do policy pricing based on the use of the vehicle? So if I had a vehicle I only use two weekends a year, am I gonna pay 20% of the cost of a vehicle I drive of every day? So we don't adjust our pricing in terms of usage because we do encourage our customers to get out there and use their vehicles as much as possible. Um, I, we do have laid up cover available for our caravans and camper trailer policies, but not for our four wheel drive. So it is just full use, fully registered vehicles. Now, as someone who has historically registered vehicles myself, I have um, definitely made that case internally and we're working on it. If there's anything there for historically registered vehicles or limited, limited usage vehicles, but at this stage, no, our pricing isn't based on usage. Thank you. Do you have a limit on the distance for your recoveries? For off-road recovery cover, no, it is just a dollar amount limit. Um, it is limited to the vehicle being off-road um, for that recovery cover. Um, but no, there isn't a kilometre limit. It is purely the cost of $1,500 for the included off-road recovery or upgraded to $10,000 or $30,000. Um, our roadside assistance, which is an op optional extra, I believe includes 150 kilometres of towing on sealed roads. Um, but that's one that you could weigh up against any other roadside manufacturer, uh, sorry, roadside provider. And in terms of claims, as in like having an accident, um, wherever that vehicle is, it's on us to recover it. Thank you. No worries. On the uh, portable items, does that include something like a camera? Yes, we can cover those. There are some electronics that are excluded, which is like gaming equipment and phones. Um, but we can cover cameras. Now, um, just as a reminder, all we ask there is that any individual items that are worth over $1,000 each, we just ask you to list them specifically on the policy. But that's something we can walk through with you in a quote of portable items versus permanently fixed items. Uh, I'm right at the back, Richard here. Um, I was with Virgin Insurance and I realised uh, a little bit too late that um, I wasn't insured. So I gave you guys a call and my life changed. I must say it was incredibly positive. It was a nice team. What you just said today is exactly how I felt. A nice bunch of people who were interested in me and, my, and what I was doing. 
um, the price of the premium of the insurance was surprisingly low. I was very, very surprised. It was almost a thousand dollars less than Virgin Insurance. So wow. I was very, very happy with that. And uh, I've been with you guys for two years. And thank you. Oh, thank you for the kind words, Richard. And, and yeah, we do aim to be as competitive as we can with our pricing. So um, yeah, definitely encourage you to weigh up apples for apples. And if something doesn't look right, feel free to have a chat to us about it. I've got something to say on it too, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, everybody probably knows Ken Ryan and that uh, he fell off the sound of a mountain up in the Barringtons. And what I'd like to say about that is your guys rec uh, organised a recovery team and they came in and recovered the vehicle, which I thought was going to be written off because of the damage that would incur as it was recovered. And the team that was sent up were the best team you could imagine and recovered the vehicle without any more vehicle uh, damage happening to the vehicle. Fantastic. Yeah. Sounds like it was a pretty traumatic event, but that's what insurance exists for, right? Is to try and get you out of, out of trouble. And look, uh, we, we try our very best there. And, and the, the crew, the recovery agents that we use for a lot of this stuff, they're pretty well versed because we're the ones sending them out there to those really remote locations when a lot of other people go, hmm, how going to drag this out to the main road and then come up with a story for insurance? So those are the sorts of things that we love to hear. And we, we really do love to help adventurers off road. I think there was one more here, and then I'll, I'll give back to, to general business. I was uh, just curious about whether the cars had to be um, either engineered or legal. Uh, one of the issues of a fully laden, laden Land Cruiser is she can be a heavy girl. Um, does that cause a problem? Well, I, I know where that question's going, and um, we've actually published an article specifically on this because we try and front up to any concerns that four-wheel drivers may have. And um, this, the simple fact of it is, um, while we encourage our customers to modify their vehicles safely and legally, we aren't a registry and we aren't the police. So as long as that vehicle is registered, um, whether or not those modifications are legal does not um, come into our calculation of the sum insured. And as an insurer, we'd actually prefer you to tell us about all the different modifications on that vehicle so we can ensure that the full value of what you've spent on it is covered. Now, when that comes to a claims time, right? Um, the way we, we kind of attacked it in this article and that um, it, it is the line that we stand on is whether or not those illegal modifications were contributory to the claim. Now, what I mean by that is say someone's got an 80 series jacked up on 37s and they're sitting at a set of lights and someone rear ends them. Um, that vehicle being on an illegally large tire with six inches of lift under it and you know, well outside of engineering parameters has nothing to do with that vehicle getting hit by a third party. So it's not on us to you know, try and do anything with that claim. That vehicle is doing the right thing. Now, if those roles were reversed and that vehicle failed to stop because it had too large of a tire and it did not have the brake upgrade it needed or maybe it rolled over because it was uh, um, lifted a bit too high and a bit too top heavy, now that's when we'll have a conversation, but again, it's not a flat out decline. It's us discussing how those illegal modifications and the choices of that driver contributed to the claim. But yeah, it's, it's it, through the, the quote experience and, and covering it for say theft and damage and that sort of thing, we would actually rather know about those. And I say that hand on heart as someone who has modified vehicles as well, that you know, I've been through that experience before. You know, you're on the phone and you're kind of rattling off the mods list in your head, but then trying to work out which ones you mention and don't mention. We are not in the business of holding that against customers in a claims experience. The reason we ask about modifications in detail is to make sure what you've spent is covered. And in the event of a claim, as long as those, say, we're calling them what they are, illegal modifications, were not contributory to the accident, no worries. If you got that vehicle engineered and did it all the right way, not only good on you, but we can cover the cost of that engineering. Uh, we went through this with a customer who had a, um, I think it was a chassis extension and a six-wheeler setup, um, where we were able to cover things like the swerve testing and the brake test and all that sort of stuff that would have to be done. Because at the end of the day, to re-register that vehicle, they'd have to jump through all those hoops again and spend all that money again. So two ways about it, engineer your vehicles and you know, flash tunes and things like that, they're all labor and installation costs that go into it. But if you have a heavily modified vehicle that um, you, know, you may have a bit of an interesting conversation at RBT about, um, that's not something that we will hold against you at claims time, unless it is contributory to the claim. 
try to be as straight with that one as we can, you know, because I know a, a lot of other uh, insurance businesses would kind of dance around that question. We just like to try and give you confidence in those. So if there are any other curly questions like that, um, if you think the, the room would benefit from it, feel free to shoot now. But otherwise, I know it's a very tight ship here and I might step to the side and answer some questions at the end. Thank you very much. <laughs>